Hello Pisces, welcome and welcome back to Pisces Network you guys. We are going to get into another reading for you to see what the messages are. I hope you're all doing well as always. Thank you so much for being here and thank you guys so much for your support. Just overall, I'm excited because not only have we reached a lot of milestones here on this particular area of the platform, but you guys have also helped me get to a thousand subscribers, not just on the underground, but also on Mom Jeans by Nutcase. So thank you guys so much. You all have been instrumental in that. <laughs> So thank you so much for the support, Pisces. Happy birthday to all of my beautiful Pisces people. I am excited for us because we are going to be celebrating. And if you are already celebrating, stay safe, be smart, but have fun, okay? But we are gonna get into these messages and we have been gifted, you guys. We have been blessed with a gift of a deck. Okay, listen, I'm excited. You can hear it. This is the Wandering Heart deck by Raina Biddy. And this was a gift to the channel. Thank you. And we're going to read some messages from these cards just to kind of see where you guys are at. Okay, y'all be sure to like the video, subscribe, get into it. If you are new, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Of course, liking the video is a free way to really support the channel. And y'all know how we do. Put the brains in the comments if it is resonating, if the reading is resonating, you guys, okay? Oh, anything you all need to know is going to be below in the description box. If y'all would like to book your personal reading to get into your specific situation, Please be sure to use the link below in the description box so you do not get scammed. I will never approach you for a reading other than on this platform in the way that I just did. I will never come into your DMs or your messages and ask to read your energy. So I don't want you guys to ever get scammed. Oh, wow. Honor your word. Interesting. So we're just going to put that to the side for a minute. I will never try to solicit funds from you unless you see my face or you click on that link, okay? So you guys be sure to book your readings today. You know what? Because it's our season, I'm going to go ahead and open up the discounts for you guys. Pisces, 5% off on readings if you want to book. And I just thought about it, so I'm going to give members 10% off, okay? Also, if you would like to donate or contribute to the channel, please be sure to use the PayPal or Zelle information below. And we'll get into it for Pisces, Guardian Angels, Archangels, Spirit Guides, and Ancestors, Father, Mother, God for Pisces. Now, this honor your word card just flipped out and I feel like it may be significant. So we're going to leave it there, but I'm going to get one more card for Pisces spirit. What are the most important messages? Oh, wow. And you know what? When I said most important messages, I was only looking for one card, but for whatever reason, my, my mouth didn't say message. It said messages. Interesting. So somewhere subconsciously, I knew that more than one card was going to come out and two cards came out. Because I was really trying to say what's the most important message for Pisces. So be very mindful and aware of your words. <laughs> there could be a situation where. Oh, y'all, I felt the bird. Excuse me. <laughs> there may be a situation where you may speak something into existence that you may not have intentionally planned to, but it could have been unintentional because of your words or your choice of speech. 
So keep that in mind. I also feel like be aware of your words, not just in a way where you want to be cautious of what you say and how you say it, but also in a way where you're paying attention to the Freudian slips that take place, whether it's with your words or with other people's words, because I feel like there's a situation where spirit is going to give you messages through other people. Like I was just watching one of the readers that I enjoy for some positive motivation and some reinforcement because I know I was going to get it from this particular reader. And they slipped up and said a word And I know, I can't remember what it is right now in my mind, but I can tell you how I felt in that moment. It was a word that was a word, but the way this reader said the word, it sounded like a name in my family, like someone's name, which kind of confirmed that what the reader was saying was for me, like that particular message, because it was a message just like any other message giving advice, but it was very specific and rang true to my situation. But I was not necessarily trying to like assume that it was my message. That's not how I really watch tarot. When I do watch tarot, I was just being objective, listening to it. And I was like, okay, that sounds like something that resonates with me. It feels like it resonates in my spirit, but I'm not going to read too much into it, even though it was something that I felt fairly strongly about. But when I heard her say that name in place of a word, like the, the way she was saying the name was right for the meaning of what she was trying to get across. But the fact that she said it, it's like she changed the word from the word that I know how to say it to the name that is personal to me and my family. So I say all that (laughs) long winded as it may be to let you guys know that whatever it is that you guys are witnessing or picking up on or observing or experiencing in your life at this time, make sure that you're very much so paying attention to every single thing that happens not in a way where you're like losing your mind, but in a way where you're just slowing down and really absorbing what's going on and feeling the energy pulse through you or bounce off of you so that you can feel everything that spirit wants you to feel. Because I believe strongly that there will be messages there for you, okay? Wow, we have source and then we have mourning. Interesting. Card number 15, card number one, and card number 23. So that's a six, a one, and a five. So 12, three, six, six, one, five, six, all that stuff. Honor your word. Now, I do know that... (laughs) So I've been pulling these cards for myself, but I know that this particular card... I feel like you guys are in a place possibly now where it may be very difficult for you to say your piece or for you to speak on certain things because the energy is really potent. There's a lot of strong energetic vibrations that are pulsating, okay, through our atmosphere and our environment and our experience. So there may be some characters that you come across. There may be some challenging conversations that you come across. There may be situations where you may have strong opinions about something, but it could be difficult for you to express those opinions. However, you, in my opinion, from this card, Pisces, if you're resonating with this message, You're the type of person where you want to do what it is that you say and say what it is that you mean. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and then do what you say. And I think that is really important. But you also have to give yourself grace because it's not easy to be that type of person. 
okay? Like, it's not always easy to be honest and genuine and authentic because, I mean, the world is full of fakeness. Let me see. We're going to read a little bit because I think it would be beneficial. Now, this Honor Your Word card, it says... Do exactly what you say you're going to do, okay? Now, stand ten toes deep. The ability to speak your peace and stand your ground takes time, practice, and courage. The more you practice what you preach, the more rewards you'll receive. Take pride in the conversations you engage in. Is there anything to learn or teach? Do not waste your breath on gossip or tasteless banter. There's no use in cursing yourself. Be careful what you breathe life into. Once your word is given, protect it. Be a person that others can depend on. And it also says, the more you commit to yourself, the more tenacity you grow. The more you believe in yourself, the more abundance will flow. The powers that be are working behind the scenes in your favor to help you bring all your visions to fruition. Why? Because your purpose Ooh, didn't mean to say that, but it's about your purpose, apparently. See what I mean? Freudian slip. Because your promises are significant to the world. The matters on your heart are imperative. So basically what they said was the powers that be are working behind the scenes in your favor to help you bring all your visions to fruition. Why? Because your promises are significant to the world. The matters on your heart are imperative. So there's something about your purpose that requires you to be honorable. I definitely feel like that's honor. Like, okay, I hate to keep bringing it up, but this is how I reference things. In Outlander, the show, right? The Scottish people would pledge fealty to their laird, which is basically their lord the person who's kind of like the leader of their particular clan. So when they would do that, they would get down on bended knee. When somebody proposes marriage, the, you know, maybe old fashioned now, but the tradition is to get down on bended knee. That to me signifies a sign of respect. I don't know what it exactly means, but in my opinion, it signifies a sign of respect and like yielding, like I yield to your choice. I yield to your judgment. I yield to your decision, but I also like, if, if you're going to get down on bended knee force a cause or a person, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to do exactly what it is that they say, but it means that you are going to show up. You're going to show up and you're going to show up in the best way that you can possibly show up and you're going to be a person who's reliable, who's dependable, who's honorable in all manners of the word, you know? And I feel like this has a lot to literally do with words. Okay. I feel like there's a shining on your spirit where you are bright. You're very, aware of words and communication and vocabulary and there's a shining on your spirit so you can say things in a way that's creative but also expressive while still being true to who you really are in your heart. I hope that makes sense. Because that's what I'm feeling with this. And like the card said, this could be a commitment to yourself. This could be a commitment to what you consider to be your life purpose, your path, your journey, what you're meant to do in this world. Because it has something to do with that. You sticking to your guns and you sticking to your word about whatever promises that not only you've made to other people, but that you've made to yourself, most importantly... That's key right now to what you're experiencing. And it looks like a sun and a star on the card. It also looks like there's a moon here on the source card, but that could be a sun. Um, but it looks like a sun and a moon to me. 
But it's interesting that her crown is like this kind of like a star. It's got points on it. And then there's a star here. So there's an anointing over your life. And what I feel is that spirit, God, source, whoever you believe in has given you certain, not just liberties, but has given you certain authority over what you want to create and the image that you want to have and the message that you want to spread. You have that authority. I mean, we all do, but there's a special, I feel like there's a special authority over what you are doing in connection to the purpose that you have in this lifetime. But first and foremost, spirit wants you to devote yourself to you above anything else because if you devote yourself to you first then it's like a practice of loyalty and if you practice that loyalty to you first then it'll be a lot easier it'll be a a, a training ground for you to stay consistent and practice that loyalty in the things that you believe in okay I feel like it's important, okay? Now, this source card, which is the first card in the deck, says you are the source of your own magic. It's talking about intuition and acceptance. It says, as time progresses, you move forward into a familiar space of light. You've grown tired of the games and the chase. You matured almost as if overnight. Your heart is grounded in enduring energy. You no longer give yourself credit for the actions you take. You suppose the human experience will run its course. Not necessarily giving yourself credit in a bad way because I was thinking about that. It says you no longer give yourself credit for the actions you take. So basically it's like you're realizing that there's a higher force. I mean, I think you guys know that, but it's realizing it on level after level after level because when we go through our life, it's like, you know, there's a higher force, you know, there's a higher power most of the time, depending on who you are, but it's reinforced over the years or over the weeks or months time over time. So again, as time progresses, you move forward into a familiar space of light. You've grown tired of the games and the chase. You matured almost as if overnight. Your heart is grounded in enduring energy. You no longer give yourself credit for the actions you take. You suppose the human experience will run its course. However, spirit sees fit. You confide in a higher power to direct your path, to direct the path you walk. With high hopes of peaceful days in the near future. Taking every day by day. You're in no sudden urgency to get anywhere specific. The quest alone is gratifying and it means you are more connected to your guides now than you have ever been. You are familiar with living and life of endless wonders. My bad. You are familiar with living a life of endless wonders. Reading is a struggle sometimes y'all. You, <laughs> you have released your value of control. Your demeanor has evolved from tense to nonchalant. You believe that whatever will be, will be, as long as you stay humble, receptive, and trusting in the instinct of divine timing. Yeah. So y'all, I'm not dyslexic or anything, I don't think, because I don't flip the letters around. I mean, sometimes I do. But I have a tendency to like read and skip words. And I think that has to do with my intuition side note I think that has to do with like my intuition because I I do it when I read and I do it when I write so it's like if I'm writing in my journal I'll find myself like skipping words but I said the word in my head and I feel like that's because my predictive like nature <laughs> and mentality 
causes me to like imagine that I wrote the word, but it's like my brain is moving faster than my hands or my mouth. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is definitely about intuition. This is definitely about your connection to source, your connection to the divine. It's an inner knowing. I feel like you guys are realizing and understanding that if you have the courage to stick with what you have set out to do, then everything is going to work itself out the way it needs to work itself out. And it doesn't matter when, as long as you know that you're moving in the right direction. Now you do have the morning card, which it feels like there is a bit of conflict. And I'll explain what I feel like all of these cards mean together, but I feel like this message is important. So the morning card says the grief will haunt you if you don't make friends with it. Mm. <laughs> Do I need to say that again? The grief will haunt you if you don't make friends with it. And it's talking about heartbreak and worry. It says the foundation of what brings you the most of both fulfillment and satisfaction has collapsed. You are encouraged to fall apart if need be. With time, you will recover. Look at this card as if it were the tower. There's another card in this deck that I actually pulled and it reminded me of a tower energy as well. Like, but it was kind of different. I digress. So it says with time, you will recover. Look at this card as if it were the tower. You are either at the end of something or the beginning. Mm, sneaky, sneaky. You're either at the end of something, Pisces, or the beginning or both. Hell, I added the both. The longer you hold on to the pain and distress, the longer misery has a hold on you. This is not a time to repress your feelings and put on a brave face. Spirit warns that you need to confront yourself and unpack your devastation before you can carry on. Now, upright, the card says, you are in the process of removing your attachment to what is no longer. You have optimism about the future. You understand that in order to grow, you can't obsess over the illusions you were married to. That's, <laughs> that's a loaded one, bitch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wait it says you have optimism about the future you understand that in order to grow you can't obsess over the illusions you were married to are they hinting at people being illusions like smoke cloud poof puff the magic dragon ghosts the ghosts of people in relationships and situations from your past that was loaded okay then it says, you've had time to sit and think. Okay. Now it's time to take the steps to actively heal. Now is the time to learn how to smile again. Okay. So there's definitely some old ghosts that you are cleansing out. Some of you may be actually saging your space, uh, cleansing your home. I wish I could put sage in my brain to cleanse that out. <laughs> so it's not like they want you to ignore whatever's going on right now, but they want you to understand how it's affecting you, what that looks like, and how you basically can overcome it by observing it from a realistic, honest perspective. So what I feel like happened is there was a situation, Pisces, or at least in this particular point in your life, this is a time where you've begun moving forward. You've dedicated yourself to something. You've devoted yourself to something. And it's something that you want to do, which you feel like either will assist with your growth and your ascension process, or you feel like not only will it help you, but it will help others. So you've devoted yourself to it. You have a new beginning here with Source. She's pregnant on the card. So it feels like there was a birth. Some of you may literally be pregnant or just gave birth or about to give birth. But this feels like just a spiritual birth as well, where you decided 
that you were going to face some conflicts and you probably chose to do it alone because with the card of morning 23, it feels like you knew and foresaw that there would be challenges on this path or challenges on this road. Now you're getting to those challenges. Now you're reaching those roots in which you want to work on, right? Some of you may be doing root work, but some of you guys, it's like you're reaching these places where the foliage has become overgrown in a spiritual sense. You're digging into things that I feel have kind of overgrown and become entangled. Ooh, that might've been loud. So that's a confirmation message. Okay. Things have become a little, oh, and this card, y'all, I've pulled this card now two days in a row. And I'm going to tell you, it totally makes sense because you're preparing for something really big. I feel like you guys are preparing for this awakening that you know you're going to have. It's like everything. I don't even know how else to explain this, but everything on your path, you know, what's going to happen. And it's not just like, Oh, you know, cause you signed your contract and all these different things and you know, whatever. No, this is like hands-on type of situation. Like, yes, your soul knows that you're going to have a certain life. I believe that wholeheartedly, but every little detail of how that life is going to go may not be listed in your contract. And I feel that you have had either dreams or visions that have led you to where you are. Of course, you've made certain choices. Now you're here. You've made a decision in the recent past that you were going to move forward despite the obstacles, despite how hard it may be, despite how much work and blood, sweat and tears that you had to put into something, despite how much fear you may have, despite how many people may ridicule you, despite how much negativity you could possibly face, despite the sleepless nights or the lack of socialization or the lack of friends or the sacrifices that you have to make, you decided that you were going to carry on and, and, and basically pledge your fealty, your loyalty to yourself and personal improvement and growth or to something that you are passionate about. And it's like, even if everything else fails, like all these swords are here on this honor your word card, right? And there's blood on that sword. There's blood on all those swords. And there's two flags. So there's two sides, two teams, whatever. You're pledging your loyalty, I feel, to yourself first and foremost. But it's like, even when no one else is around, like nobody's standing here by these swords. Even when it's just you and you're the only one left to fight, you decided that you were still going to fight. And it's a good fight because... It's for a reason. It's for a reason that you know intuitively is not only going to just benefit you, but you know it's going to benefit more people than you might even be able to imagine and fully fathom at this time. And it's interesting because you have a one and a five on this card, honor your word. Then you have a one on the source card and a five collectively with the 23. So one, five, one, five could be significant. Six is significant. Six, six is significant. 12 is significant. Three is significant. And yeah. So now it's like, as you have started on this journey and embarked upon this journey, what I basically mean when it comes to like the finer details of your contract, like your contract might say that you're going to do this, this, and then you're going to have that happen. And then you're going to reach your destination. But the details, the finer points, the fine print, it may not have all been written out to you. So now it's like you're seeing what all of those details of your contract entail in real time. It's kind of like reading tarot cards. Like I can tell you what the card kind of means and what I feel intuitively is going on. But the exact scenario may not be as I explain it. So the feelings that are 
taking place when when things are going on can be explained. And maybe even some of the details can be picked up. Um, the mindset that you could be in could be picked up, but the exact situation may play out in a numerous amount of different scenarios for each of you. Okay. So when it comes down to this, I feel like the scenario of your contract is playing out. And this is a pivotal moment that you had the courage to make a choice about. And you made that choice with confidence because like the source card says, you know that what will be will be. And I feel like you're confident in that. But there's something that kind of rocked your foundation or shook you a little bit. Because I feel like what this morning card is saying is that now that you've gotten into it and you see how much really is going down. Okay, pause for the bus. That sounded like a fucking bus, y'all. And it was a little bitty ass car. <laughs> but now that you see what's kind of like entailing all of these different situations, even though you kind of know what's going to happen, you know that you're going to overcome it. It's like the actual setting in of it is, is, it's a little daunting and that's why spirit wants you to really make friends with these emotions and know how they affect your life. I'm telling you, this is for y'all who feel a calling and an anointing over your life. That's bigger than you, because that's what this sacrifice card is talking about. You realize that it's bigger than you. It's above me now. Okay, boo. It's above me now. And I got to do this because if I don't do this, then the people after me won't be able to have the courage to do this or they won't have a blueprint for what needs to take place. So there was a reading I think I did that was like the blueprint or something like that. And I know I'm talking a lot, but this is necessary. Um, and I feel like it's a message that those of you who have a great calling over your life needed to hear. It's kind of like, how can I explain it? It's kind of like when you, I know this is going to maybe sound bad, but I have to use this, this example because I feel like this is what this is. And if you guys have gone through a loss recently, I'm sending you my deepest condolences and love for your healing and for your peace. Okay. But what I can equate this to is you being excited about something and then you getting there and it's kind of like it is what you expected, but it's not what you expected. So you have to learn how to work with the energy. Um, knowing that something was going to be a challenge, right? So if you have social anxiety, sometimes like I do, it may be anticipation of like going to a social event. You're excited because you want to see what's going to happen and you want to see who's going to be there and you want to maybe dance or even eat because that's one of my highlights or you want to just have a good time and, and enjoy the experience. But then when you get there, it's like, okay, now I'm at the door and bitch, I got to walk in and that's scary. You know what I'm saying? Now, for those of you who have experienced loss and you understand this, I equate this also with just the way that this feels kind of challenging, less, it feels exciting, but it also feels like there's a deep pain associated with the sacrifices that you're making. And the sacrifices that you're making have to do with you taking what you've experienced and transmuting it, which is difficult. And it's kind of not as, jovial or fluffy as a party what I really equate this to is a situation where for example when I was young and my mother passed away and I knew something was weird about the day energetically I knew something was strange and I did not feel settled in my spirit and I was in what eighth grade no seventh grade so I had to be 13 
And I just turned 13 too. And in my spirit, something was not easy. And I found out after school that my mother had passed away, but I didn't find out until I got to the hospital at the front desk. And I've told this story before to some of you guys, but my grandmother, God rest her soul, did her best, right? And she was definitely from a different time, but I got out of school and was on the way to the hospital. The people at school told me, don't take the regular bus home because I was taking public transportation. I had to take two trains and a bus to get to school. So therefore I had to take a bus and two trains to get back. And I was at my grandmother's house because my mother had been in the hospital. And this day they told me on the intercom, oh, tell Miss Person, don't take the bus. She needs to report to the front office for car pickup or something like that. Her family is here to pick her up. And with the uneasiness of my spirit throughout the day without even having that message until the end of the day, I knew something was up. I knew, you know, the boo-boo was starting to boo-boo. Okay. It was starting to stank. So I get in the car with my grandmother and my uncle and my uncle was driving and they were arguing about telling me what was going on. Like as a child, I'm like, what are y'all arguing? About? I knew it was something about me, but I thought I might've been in trouble and I didn't know what I was in trouble for. So is I really didn't do anything. So I'm like, it can't be that I'm in trouble. But, but my uncle was saying, you need to tell her before we get there. Basically. And my grandma was like, no, we're going to just wait till we get there. And my uncle was like, no, that's not a good idea because she, she need to know what's going on before we get in there. And I think he was right. He's an Aquarius. He knew, but it's okay. My grandmother was an Aries. She did her best. You know, it, it that's just who she was. And this feeling to me is the feeling. It feels like that feeling to me in this message for what's going on with y'all right now. This is a feeling of knowing that is some shit hitting the fan. Like the shit ain't actually hit the fan, but it's rising. And you like, why is this shit floating in the air? I notice, I notice it's going to stink. This going to stink. And I can tell something stank. It's like when your pet maybe had an accident in the house and they hit it and you don't know where it's at, but you could smell it. But it's like you also know that you're protected in the same moment because when we were riding to the hospital, it was very much so like a little bit of a numbness. but also a, a a shielding of preparedness. I was prepared. I felt numb, but I also felt shielded as if I was not driving. Like literally I was in the back seat of the car. My uncle was driving, but it felt deeper than that. It felt like I was not even feeling the bumps of the car. And we talk about Chicago expressways. Okay. It felt like I was literally floated And even in my memory of the situation, I felt like when I saw my mother, it was like I floated from the car to the front desk where I heard the lady say, is she deceased? And in my childhood, 12, well, 13 year old mind, I'm like, I know what deceased means. And bitch, you must be lying. You, you a dumb bitch. Like I was cussing that lady out in my mind, in my 13 year old mind. Like, are you stupid? Cause I was already like, nah, 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 nah. That (laughs) is this what we doing now? And my uncle ended up being right because when they said we was going to the hospital to see my mama, I just thought we was going to go for a visit. And my uncle was like, no, you need to tell her. And when I got to the desk, he was right because the nurse told me she didn't want to tell me, but the motherfucking nurse told me. So 
it's like I floated. I was being carried back to my mother's room. And before I got there, another nurse was like, hold on, baby girl. I need to talk to you. And she stopped me and kind of like prepared me emotionally for what I was going to see. But actually seeing my mother and trigger warning, because I'm sorry, I should have said trigger warning, but you know, it is what it is. My bad. But literally seeing my mother in that position, in that hospital bed with her spirit, I knew her spirit had left her body. Like when, when you have witnessed a person pass or you have witnessed death after the fact, you can tell that that person's spirit had left their body. And I feel like my mom was walking with me down that hallway trying to reassure me. And I can talk about it now. I still get a little choked up, but the observation of it helps me sometimes to really see why I feel certain ways. And I, and I encourage you to do this in your own life. But that's what I equate this to. You know that there's something bigger than yourself, Pisces, that you have to do. And it's something within your soul that you cannot deny. You know you have to do it because you know that it's deeper. You can feel it in your roots. And as you're walking on this path figuratively and you see these clusters and tangles of roots you gotta get through them and you knew you were gonna have to face it but it's like actually seeing it and actually facing it it can take a lot out of you and that's why spirit has been telling you to give yourself grace don't beat yourself up don't allow what's going on and how heavy it may feel to make your, make yourself be down on yourself. Do not allow that to happen because that's not what, that's not what your spirit team wants you to do. And that's what I equate this to is the moment where I knew my mother had passed in my heart, in my soul, It was confirmed the uneasiness that I was feeling the whole day. So it's like, you know, you're going to face some challenges, but actually seeing them and being in them and having them be in your presence and in front of your face, fully materialized beyond just what you thought they were going to be, having them be fully materialized into the circumstance that you have to navigate, it's hard. It's hard. And it's trying. But what Spirit is trying to say here is that you've been prepared for this. You are ready for this. Even if you don't feel like you're ready for this, they're taking the training wheels off. And this is a sacrifice that I feel like you're making because you choose to, not because you feel like you have to, but because you choose to, okay? Because you know that you need to pave the way for someone coming after you. You're not sure who it is. Look at that. And then the food card. You're not sure who it is. You're not sure what it's about or what for because it's going to multiply and, you know, transmute into something probably that we won't even be able to really fully comprehend until it's played out, which could be hundreds of years from now. But you know, you have to plant that first seed. You know, you have to take that first step because whatever is going to materialize, however many years from now that it takes is something that you know, in your soul is important. Now, the sacrifice card says, may your sacrifices be acknowledged and appreciated, which says servant and Godspeed. You are being called to introduce new themes of healing to your community. You are being pulled to teach others how to love themselves. For once, this is not about you and only you. However, 
You will not be able to guide a soul if you yourself are still wandering. This is a time to become a recluse. Reserve your vitality for the most significant of things. Master stillness. Share what you've learned and when the time is right. Sorry, share what you've learned when the time is right. Y'all get what I'm saying. Then it says, you feel the urge to shed several layers. Prepare yourself for a unique journey. A course you've never anticipated. Pay attention to your dreams. There, you'll meet an overflowing number of messages that will advise you. The key is to be so abnormally aware that no sign gets past you, whether conscious or subconscious. And that's what I was talking about earlier. I felt it. I knew the car was going to come out. I, and, and not just because I pulled it. So don't get me wrong. Okay. And don't put words in my mouth. I knew that this was not just about me when I pulled this card. I knew that it was also when the message came through that it was also something that was being tested through me that I was being tested with so that I could bring it to you guys after reflecting upon it to give you this message because spirit really wants y'all to be aware. I keep saying that too, cognizant and aware, cognizant and aware. Spirit really wants y'all to be aware of everything because it's going to click if you're paying attention. Okay. Now, again, it says the key is to be so abnormally aware that no sign gets past you, whether conscious or subconscious. Manage your stress. This is new for everyone. Grant yourself the blessing to shed and surpass the current place you are in. This way, you'll be ready to enlighten. So basically, you are supposed to enlighten others with what you learn at this time. And I feel like you being becoming fully acquainted and you see the forest in both of these cards you becoming fully acquainted with that which you are leaving behind and seeing what it means firsthand in real time to have to leave these ghosts of your past whatever they may be behind you seeing it firsthand you will be able to basically let people know what they need to be prepared for. Okay. Now I just want to tell y'all too, like I feel so much, <laughs> I feel good y'all. Cause I cleaned out my cards and I put all my cards back in the boxes and like cleaned off my desk. Cause it was ridiculously dusty. Like it was nasty bitch. Like you would have thought I was living in a damn hole in the cave or something. How nasty this desk was. I am not ashamed to say it. This bitch was nasty. And the table behind me was nasty too. And I wrote a new affirmation because the old one, it, it was time to change it. And the new, I shared this with you a while back, you guys, but I don't know if it was members or the collective of Pisces, but I'll share with you the new one. It says, I know that no matter what challenges I face, I'm always in safety and protection from my spirit team. All challenges will be successfully overcome. So if you want to use that for yourself, you be my guest. What is Pisces energy at this time, spirit? This, this message was just for you. So I feel like spirit is saying that it's time for you to do some more things regularly that are just for you so that you can have the strength to make whatever sacrifices that you guys are being called to make that are a part or a portion of your particular path. Okay. If the car would stay where it's at, thank you. All right. The number four came out. So remember the important numbers for you right now are definitely six, one, five, 12, three, and four. 12, 12 together, six, six together. So March is going to be very significant. Have y'all felt different? Because this is the first day of Pisces season, y'all. It's the 20th when I filmed this. I immediately felt different 
as soon as Pisces season flipped over, like I was, I was slick anxious at the end of Aquarius season. Emotionally, I was feeling anxious. But as soon as Pisces season flipped over, like I barely got five hours of sleep last night. And my son had a project due. I had take I had taken my laptop to the Apple store. And you know, that's a hassle sometimes, depending on where you at. At least where I'm at, I know it's a hassle because it just takes so long to get in and out of there. And I was just doing that. I was just drained. But today, I woke up so fresh. Probably because I cleaned off this desk and I cleaned up my room. But, man, Pisces season, really, it really be knocking me back in the gear, y'all. So, I hope y'all are feeling refreshed. I hope this message has helped you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. What is Pisces energy spirit? Oh, that's what I'm talking about, bitch. Yes. Hangman reverse. It's going into the reverse. So that means you are in a process right now of freeing yourself from whatever has kept you stuck. So what I need for you to do is chill out. Don't be mad. Don't be sad. Don't be mad that you sad. Don't be sad that you mad. Just be whatever. Be what it is, okay? Don't rush yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Take the time that you need because you untying yourself from things. And that can be tricky because that involves knots and, and, and Rubik's cube like agility with your fingers, nimbleness. You got to maneuver and finagle shit. This is just what it is. And I feel like you're starting to see that that's another crown technically on this hangman and I feel like you're starting to see clearly what you need to do and what it's all for okay the ace of cups yes and the nine of cups your energy is Pisces your energy is so beautiful and I appreciate you I appreciate you who have watched this reading to this point I appreciate you who have supported this channel I appreciate you who have not only showed up for other people, but most importantly, showed up for yourself so you can get to this point. I appreciate your your kindness, your love, your understanding, your accountability, your courage, your perseverance, your creativity. And somebody just yelled when I said that. <laughs> And everything that is entailing your essence. This is beautiful energy. I feel like you guys feel love. I feel like you guys feel happy, joy. There's laughter here. I feel like this is a wonderful feeling. And keep in mind, if you are in this feeling, you may be at this point where you're connecting and making yourself one with source. And you're becoming very aware of what spirit is trying to show you and what God is trying to give you. So if there is a time that comes in the near future where you may have some type of upset or setback or something that you feel like is an upset or setback, navigate it gracefully when it comes to how you view yourself, because this is the energy that will the, the same energy that you went into it with is the same energy that you're going to come out of it with. So if you went from happy to kind of feeling challenged or obstructed, you're going to feel happy again. If you're in a place where you haven't been obstructed yet or you haven't reached that challenging moment where you actually see what it's going to take firsthand, when you get there, just give yourself grace. And if you are in that moment where you're having to find a way to give yourself grace, just know that your spirit team is really happy for you and about you. They are proud of you. You've accomplished so much. And you're feeling accomplished. You're feeling successful. You feel, especially when it comes to whatever you may have been challenged with recently, it could have also it, it could have been a, a something associated with the situation, the forest through the trees. That's what I just heard. So you may have been kind of lost or feeling lost, unsure of what was going to happen. 
and you may have been in a place where you lost sight of the forest through the trees. And that just means you probably were too close to a situation and you needed to back up to gain a, a higher perspective so you could see the bigger picture. You may have lost sight of the bigger picture for a moment because of everything that you were feeling bearing down on you. But when you get through this, or if you are through this now, this is a feeling of accomplishment and great joy for how far you've come because the vision is even clearer. And that's what this feels like to me. It's having clarity of vision, okay? What does Pisces need to be aware of when it comes to the near future spirit? What does Pisces need to be aware of when it comes to the near future? Oh, it was almost in reverse, baby. Okay. Conventionally unconventional. That's what spirit wants you to be. Conventionally unconventional. Devoted and committed, but also free flowing. Observant of the status quo, but willing to push the boundaries a little. Willing to strike your own path and go your own way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, but don't be afraid of spontaneity and creativity. What you need to know when it comes to the near future, you may be dealing with a Taurus, possibly a Libra, maybe even a Virgo or Scorpio. I don't know why I'm getting Scorpio. However, there is going to be a test. I feel like there's going to be a test of what you have just learned. I feel like there's going to be knowledge that you receive. I feel that this is going to be a choice where you can choose if you're going to pivot left, right, or center. And I also feel you need to, or at least try to do your best that whatever you face in the near future, because this is a five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a five. Whatever you do in the near future, and the hangman is a 12, so remember, 6-6-12, six, six, okay? When it comes to an, a challenge or an obstacle, whatever you face in the near future, it's literally, it's not necessarily that it's not about you. It is about you, but it's not entirely about you. And when I say that, it brings me back to this sacrifice card. Because it's not all about you, but it is about you. Because it's your situation, but it's your situation showing you how to teach others how to get through a situation like your situation. Okay. Um, it's going to require... your mind, your brain, your thoughts, your logic, but it's also going to require your heart, your love, your emotions. Working in tandem together to solve whatever the equation is. This is about you being a teacher, but not being rigid. This is about you doing what needs to be done, but also having the ability to flow like the wind. Okay. I feel that's just what I feel. Now the page of swords is at the bottom and the tower card. Interesting. And they said the tower. I feel like this could be with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And I said Scorpio, did I not? <laughs> and thank you, the tower card. I be knowing what I'm feeling. So strong Libra energy, strong Taurus energy, strong Scorpio energy, and possibly 
Gemini or Aquarius. This is about learning new things, gaining information so that you can be prepared for the unexpected. Didn't I say earlier, expect the unexpected? I don't think so, but that's what I'm feeling now. This is the way that spirit is going to prepare you for the unexpected and for you not to be afraid to deal with changes. There could be a change in authority or leadership at your job or your place of employment. This could be also a shift of power. So it could be talking about, it, it doesn't necessarily have to talk about a shift of power, literally. It could be like a spiritual shift of power, like an energetic power shift. Left brain, right brain. So go back and watch that reading. What was the left brain, right brain reading? Which one was that? Oh, that was, wait. I thought I put the title left brain, right brain. I don't, I don't know. I think that was the emotional control reading. Somebody put it in the comments. I know y'all will put it in the comments, but I be want to know so I can say the right thing. Y'all hit the like button while I'm being anal. Okay. Definitely being anal. Yeah. Left brain, right brain. That was the one that was the, emo I think the thumbnail was emotional control. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel like this is. Because there may be a part of you that I don't know which part is going to be activated, but it's like your more logical side, which is, I think, the left brain may lead you to want to make one decision but then your more emotional side which i believe is the right brain may lead you to want to make a different decision and it's like this is about you learning how to balance those different aspects so that you can so that you can more easily make decisions for the future it's about you learning those how those different aspects weigh heavily on your choices because they are influenced by these different ghosts in your life that you're clearing out and, and detangling. Okay. It's like your left brain may be more logical and tell you, Oh, I can't take that leap of faith because it just doesn't make logical sense. But then your right brain is like, but I'm passionate about this and I know it's going to work. And in my soul, I could just feel it so deep. And that could be what you're learning. That's what I feel like this is. It's like as you free yourself from the ways that you used to respond, as you free yourself from the ways that you used to act, as you free from yourself from the ways that you used to make decisions and why you used to make those decisions because you're clearing out the trauma and the baggage that they stem from in those roots, you're going to have to basically learn over again how to listen to your intuition and what it's telling you because there may be a situation where your logical left brain is correct and your more emotional right brain is incorrect but there may be more situations where your emotional right brain could be the right choice and your left brain could be hindering you so you have to learn how to deal with that and that's what I feel like this is that's what you need to know about in the near future keep in mind these are two major arcanas and then you have the tower card as well Pisces energy really strongly, uh, Scorpio energy and possibly cancer. Cause we saw the Ace of Cups, but the strongest energies I have here are Pisces, Libra, Taurus, Virgo, Scorpio, maybe Gemini and Aquarius, and also possibly cancer. Okay. Yep. 
let's see. I'm just gonna get one, one of these. What are those? No, I'm just playing. Let's get messages of the cosmic. And then we gonna wrap it up. Cause Dave Chappelle just hit the wrap it up box over there. I don't know where his wife at y'all, but he just hit the wrap it up box. And he told me I need to wrap it up, okay? <laughs> y'all be sure to put a brain in the comments if it is resonating. Thank you guys so much for being here. Like the video, subscribe, book your personals with the discount code that will be in the description box below. And if you would like to donate or contribute, please be sure to use the PayPal or Zelle information, guys. What is the overall advice for Pisces spirit? Thank you. Look at you with your little alien self. <laughs> Find ways to lighten up and not take everything so seriously. Boom. There we go. Give yourself grace. It says stop giving away your power right now. Right now. Okay. Do your thoughts need a reboot? Focus on the good in your life. Okay, yeah. So spirit wants you to be positive because whatever you're leaving behind, it may hurt. Whatever you're having to face and uproot and detangle and dig up and deal with right now, it may be challenging, but you know why you're doing it. So that in itself should be energetically used as motivation so that you don't feel as bad about it or you it, it's not as heavy okay so i hope that helped you guys be sure to like the video subscribe thank you so much for being here as always pisces and remember this is our circle booze bye <laughs>